Hey, what's going on, guys? Nick Tragilli here on Generation Iron, bringing you another episode of the Bodybuilding Coach. This is where we discuss training, supplements, and nutrition. On this week's episode, we're going to talk about active recovery and all different levels of, of active recovery. So first of all, some people might be saying, hey, what's active recovery? I don't know what that is. Oh, I love that. Oh, I do that already. So first, let me just uh, explain very quickly what active recovery is and what it's for and what it's about. So there's all different levels of active recovery. We can go basic as a massage, sleeping, um, foam rolling, uh, TENS machines, cryotherapy, saunas, um, just even stretching is active recovery on some levels. We're going to talk about a bodybuilder's active recovery workout since that's what the channel is about. Um, but there's also different dynamics of active recovery if you're trying to be a, an athlete or you're trying to do some type of sports-specific basketball training, uh, football training, whatever you're, what sport you're doing. There's active recovery for that also. But since it's bodybuilding, I'm going to solely focus on active recovery for bodybuilding and fitness and weight training. So besides the, like the basic things I just mentioned to you for active recovery, let's talk about the active recovery where you actually train in the gym again. Basically a, a black and white car carbon copy of what you just did in the gym, but a less intense, less volume, um, and less time in the gym. Now you're probably saying, well, why would I do that? That's so silly. I just did that workout. Why would I do it all over again? You don't necessarily have to do it set by set, you know, machine by machine, but you want to put blood back in that body part that you just trained. So for example, Monday, we did back. You don't necessarily have to do your active recovery the day after. You could, you could proceed to do it two days after, which is sort of how I like to do it because usually the day after, I'm not really feeling that soreness yet, the lactic acid buildup. It's usually the second day where I'm like, damn, like I'm sore. So that's usually when I hit the, the active recovery workout. But listen, there's no right or wrong way of going about your active recovery. You don't have to do it. There's no scientific study saying that you have to do active recovery the day after. I've sometimes done it three days after my workout. It just really depends on how your body is and how sore you get. I'm not going to do this every week. This is something I do when I really go to the next level for my training, um, maybe for a show or if I'm really pushing my off-season growth. Um, that's when I'm really going to implement the active recovery. It's not something I do 365 days a year or for every body part. Not every body part requires it and not every person requires this. Some people just literally like to take the old school way of just resting, like sitting home, laying on a couch, sleeping, maybe a light massage, um, cryotherapy, stuff like that is more something they want to implement than doing this. But I've noticed that once I incorporate the active recovery on my weaker body parts, where I was having struggling to put on muscle in those areas that the active recovery really, really, really um, pushed me to the next level as far as my intensity for those body parts, um, how often I could train them, the frequency, and my muscle mind connection to them. So active recovery is basically what you're trying to do is put as much blood into that muscle as possible in a very short period of time without exhausting the muscle again. So you're not trying to put it through a rigorous workout where you're breaking down muscle tissue again, because then that's counterproductive. All you're trying to do is put blood in that muscle very quickly and very fast, but the least amount of output. So you're not trying to lift 405 again on bent over rows or, or deadlift 500 pounds again. You're trying to put as much blood into those muscles that you just did in the gym with the least amount of weight with the least amount of output. So maybe do some pull-ups uh, for your back. Maybe some light, like, cable rows, uh, maybe some pullovers. Um, very light exercises where you're not going to tax your central nervous system again because then your body's just going to be in doubled under pain and double under recovery mode. And that's what we're not trying to do. We're just trying to speed up the recovery. So by putting more blood, red blood cells, into the muscle that you just trained is going to hypothetically speed up the process of which you can recover. Because once you break down a muscle tissue – you're basically ripping it up and scarring it up, like basically taking a knife to it and ripping it up when you're training. So what that happens is your body says, okay, I need to fix that now, recovery mode, and it tries to repair it. But it's hard to get all the blood there because of all the amount of muscle tissue you carry, the amount of work it takes for the body to do that. So to speed up the process, we're going to put blood in there by training it and telling the body, hey, I'm going to force blood back into my back now 
to help you recover. And that's in very bland, simple terms. And that's basically like, you know, grammar school language. But there's a lot of science that goes behind that, obviously. But we're trying to dumb this down for as, for everyone as possible. Um, now, you're probably saying, well, what do I do if I'm really not sore? Or maybe, oh, that seems like a lot of work. Well, listen, you, know, you should try it and see if it works out for you. And if you feel like it speeds up the process in which your recovery, then maybe it's something you can implement. And it's not something you need necessarily for your arms or your shoulders. I've never really done it for those body parts because they repair pretty quick because they're small body parts. But for my chest, back, and legs, it's something I really enjoy doing. Um, it got rid of the stiffness. Um, and you're not know, really bad tightness where you're like cramping, you're just uncomfortable. It got rid of that feeling. Um, and then also I noticed that once I started doing these active recoveries, I didn't need them as often because my body was recovering faster now. Whatever it sped up in my body, it worked. Um, and I, and I really liked the feeling of putting blood in a muscle that's tender and sore. And it really helped me connect to my muscles a lot better because when I'm sore, that's when I really, really grasped the muscle mind connection when I was younger. Um, and I tell people this all the time. This is the best way. And I think this is the best learning method, like putting the, tr the, the training wheels on a bicycle to learn how to get the feel the muscle mind connection. Because when you're sore and the body's, you know, broken down and, and tender, you can connect to that muscle very easily. You know, when you're like two days after the gym, you feel really tight. Well, imagine going into the gym now and training that body part with that tightness that you can feel. It's an amazing feeling in the beginning. I don't know if anyone's ever done this, but it's an amazing feeling when you get to the gym and you can feel that connection literally the first rep in the gym. It's not something you gain, you know, 10, 15 minutes later into the workout because now you have blood in that muscle and you can feel it much better. This is something as soon as you grab a bar or whatever you're trying to do in the gym, you can feel the muscle. It tenses up right away. So I always tell beginners, especially novice people, to go in the gym and train when they're sore and see what it feels like. That connection is unbelievable, and it really speeds up the process of getting you to the next level. Now, of course, there's levels to the muscle-mind connection. There's people that can literally fatigue a muscle with very light weight and exhaust the muscle with very light weight, as if it does have a lot of weight on there, because that's the, that's the amount of tensity they have with their mind. So it does go a long way. Next, with active recovery, make sure it's short and abbreviated. It's not long and dragged out because you're not trying to be there all day. You're trying to do a, uh, an hour workout that you normally would do in probably 15 minutes. Um, and just shorten the sets, shorten the reps. Um, very hard contractions is what you're focused on. So the contractions that you're focused on with the heavier weight in the gym, the prior workout, imagine going 10 times harder with the contraction with extremely light weight and very slow reps. You're not trying to be up the muscle, like I said. You don't want to get hurt, number one. Number two, you're just trying to recover and put blood there. So as soon as you feel a little bit of blood flow, I'd move on to the next exercise. Also to include during the active recovery workouts, make sure you always stay hydrated. I believe in using amino acids during this time heavily for active recovery. Um, and make sure you're obviously eating enough to do these active recovery workouts. It's not something you need to do every week. I would implement it when you need and, um, and try it out and see if you guys enjoy it. It's something that I started doing when I was very young. Um, and I used it throughout my whole career. And like I said, I went through periods where I didn't use it. And I went through periods where I used it a lot. Um, it really comes in handy during prep because I'm training my body parts a lot more frequent. Um, so it also helps picking up that end. But make sure you always give yourself enough time. Don't ever do it before, you know, 24 hours or after a workout. Then it's pretty much counterproductive. So always wait at least a day. Um, and you go up to three days waiting time for active recovery workouts. But I hope this helped a lot of you guys out and learning about active recovery workouts. If you have any more questions, always feel free to ask me. Um, make sure you guys are following Generation Iron. Make sure you guys like us. And always, if you have any questions, email us at info at generationiron.com. And be sure you're following me at Nick World Class on Instagram. I appreciate all the love, guys. Thanks again. Until next week. See you later.